Sentinels and 100 Thieves dubbed as the Cloud Classica. There's a lot of similarities for both of these teams, especially how anticlimactic their last season ended, or as they would put it. I think the, just the whole 2020 season was kind of just a whole mess for us. Just there was a lot of like in-game like role issues that we were struggling with, some out of game stuff that uh, I was struggling with. And so just overall, I think like 2023 season was definitely like really hard. And when we look back at it, we're just like, holy, we're just like really, really unfortunate that uh, stuff kind of unraveled this way. We improved a lot throughout the year. And I just thought, you know, things are gonna go our way in a lot of times. And uh, I felt like the year was really overall unlucky where we, you know, you could say we choked. Um, maybe in some matches we could have been more confident, definitely. But one day it's one thing and another day it's another thing. It's very understated how dominant America's is as a region where if you put us in any other region, we would have been just fine. We would have been the best team. The commonality continues where both teams picked up past world champions, have very passionate CEOs, clouded social media presence, and players. All these similarities have made people dub this as a rivalry. However, as I'm sure many know by now, this bout has been one-sided for a while. Sentinels just beat the mess out of 100 Thieves constantly. So in this rematch, we get to see what path two teams were once seen as mid took. Map 1 was on Lotus. Throughout the scoreboard, we see the difference between one team having several months of preparation and the other significantly less. Especially for Zekin, who has been dubbed as the Short King, but when he stands on his kills, he's easily 7 feet tall. That's just my way of saying how imposing of a duelist he was on this map. Just on the attacker side, this raised fragger went double positive with an average combat score of 343. If it wasn't for Tenz's star power, Zelsa's huge personality, John QT's growing fandom, or even Saucy's blinding bald head, Zekin would be getting a lot more praise from the community for his dominating play. Overall, the way Sentinels played on Lotus was in stark contrast to how 100 Thieves handled the evening. For example, on round 12, Bang is by himself in what we call a one and done. This is because holding an angle here means that you have nowhere to retreat. You're most likely going to get one kill and die afterwards. Eventually, he actually got zero, but even if he got one or two, there's still no one on the site to defend it. For some reason, his chamber decides to leave him while three players are on C site due to how well Sentinels have been manipulating the map. So, if one person is defending a site, you do not want to be in this type of one and done situation. To be fair to 100 Thieves, they haven't had as much time together as Sentinels. It was rumored that Bustier was playing with his current teammates since late 2023, but nothing official since he was still under contract with Evil Geniuses. Sentinels on the other hand have been cooking up schemes and game plans with their current lineup and off-season events, which are basically the equivalent of public scrims with stakes. Kind of like how earlier in that round they basically worked the whole map to get info by first showing presence on C, then A, followed by B site, and eventually A again. This way of getting info bleeds a lot of clock time as well as tests the other team's patience and mental fortitude to hold a site. Rounds like these just show the difference in mid-round calling between the two teams. However, it was a different story on Vine. I noticed during map selection, Bustio was kind of surprised by Kaplan's pick, and we can see why on round 8, where he uses Gecko's ult to get Sentinels to bite on the A fake, where they ultimately end up committing more players too. And since the teleporter opened, the rest of 100 Thieves knew that there was one less player on B site. Also, the great thing about Gecko is his ability to pick up most of his utility so he can use it again, which he did on B site, which helped him get this kill on Sky in Garden. Bassi is on an He's island, more. isolated, tucks to the corner, and Thrash is going to be meeting him, detained, Sky's not out. a chance. This round as a whole kind of shows you that Gecko may be the superior initiator on Bime when going against Sky, because he can do everything Sky can, but multiple times in a round especially flashes where Sky is now permanently stuck at a maximum of two per round. However, unlike Sky, Gecko has the ability to defuse with his utility as well, which is how they won this round, by Wingman halving the bomb. Bench, it's gonna be cleared now, out towards Shows, and yeah, the time pressure becoming an issue. You hear the Molly landing at the feed. Okay, half on the defuse, oh, missed. Wingman! The Molly missed! Half on it, push them back! It's all down to Celsius, but there's four players left and it's already half under the fuse. It's essentially a round win. Celsius, you have to spray them all down and it's just not a chance. Not a chance. A hundred thieves. He uses Thrash to throw fakes a couple of times throughout this map too. 
one of which ended with him showing us a master class. Finish. Here's the footsteps, doesn't know where they are. Exactly, but strikes correctly. Round ended. What a clutch to end the half for our Gecko cosplayer here. <laughs> Defending world champion Bustio. However, I do have to mention this is the first time I've ever seen someone commit a thrash Rosa. Overzealous. It's a two versus two with the rifles here. Bustio, he sent a thrash into the mix. He wants to try and get that to table, but he missed it. He has to cancel it. This is chaotic. Overall, with the help of Bustio's brilliance, 100 Thieves were able to take map two. Now for Split, which both teams played in their previous matchup. 100 Thieves absolutely dismantled Leviathan, but rewatching that match, a lot of those rounds just felt like a brawl. While Sentinel's previous match was a little bit more structured, until Sadak went absolutely nuclear towards the end. And looking at these team comps, 100 Thieves not having a Sentinel really hurt their ability to gather info on the defensive end, which might explain why Sentinel stats are far superior when comparing both teams' defender sides. Also, Asuna struggled a lot too, where he had zero first kills and six first deaths. Very reminiscent of how Quick struggled against them too. I want to point this out because I saw a lot of people saying Asuna is bad on raids, but I kind of disagree. I think Sentinels just live up to their org's name very well by having a tough split defense. Whereas 100 Thieves defense was a bit more lacking. Round 8, Sentinels were doing the same type of trickery that we saw on Lotus by getting the defenders to rotate and therefore leaving only one 100 Thieves defender on site. I don't know what it is about 100 Thieves players who love holding a one and done when they're the only ones left on site, but hey, hopefully they will learn after this match. If there's only one person holding a site, I personally would prefer them to be in a place where they can get a kill and retreat so they can retake with the team rather than just retake with less players. Shoot, just showing presence or even throwing a mosh pit from a safer angle could slow down the other team's entry. Even if you don't know where everyone else is, this could give you enough time to bring at least one person over so you're not by yourself. Despite these mistakes, 100 Thieves were able to take back the lead. My attacks are hearing them drop down now, making that calm information known. Bang. Weaving in and out backwards here. Celsius unable to get the half on a defuse. That's the pull, the benefit of all of this. Oh, no, how does he win that? And now the wall working against him in his face! Cryo! That is disgusting! Hundred Thieves were also able to find some success by attacking A Heaven and planting Wingman from there. But once again, Sentinels were able to adapt to this. Previously, you can tell they were setting up for a mid push, but the next round they were ready to fight for A Heaven. Set up for success now. Paranoia though, being held by tens here. Yep, and here's a refight all the way together here. But do they have the guns for it? Yes, straight to the dome. Boost here removed. The spike dropped down as on top of this one, right from behind. Second, he pushed out A main. That is filthy work here, only with the classic. And they have swarmed the position. <laughs> Relentless, <laughs> running and gunning. Cryo, he's not taking his time of it. They have just answered back instantaneously. What are we watching, man? Split was also home to both IGLs shooting back. One player up into heaven, that's Bustio. Oh, Jane, flick, adjustments, all their detainment. Is it all live? John QT, the savior. The Bustio. Oh, he can't get it. What a pace increase from Sentinels. Thanks to these heroics, Sentinels were able to get their first win of the season. Time is of the essence. They dropped down themselves. I into the back of the side. He's tucked close. And he gets the kill. That could be it. Bang, flash. And he's just being cornered! Sentinels eliminate 100 Thieves! I want to point out how Sassy didn't let his previous split performance weigh him down and bounce back with better stats. I'm also loving these risky plays that Tens is pulling off. If it wasn't for Bang's spray through the wall smoke, then I could have seen him do even more damage. His aim is also still crispy too. To a point that he even makes the Guardian look deadly in close quarters. Working around, waiting for the timing with the top 10! That's all him with the Guardian. Taking down the world champion. He did get punished a few times for his risky moves, like how he just ulted onto A site with no one else from his team close to him. A similar thing happened on Lotus's C site too. But hey, that's just the price you have to pay because when it works, he looks like a genius. I can also tell Sentinels are drawing up plays to make his pushes a little bit less risky too. 
Overall, Sentinels just look like the better team. They low-key have an advantage going into their next match since they get the rest and look at their mistakes while their opponents are focusing on their next matchup. Which is why the winner's bracket is typically played first since you want those in the lower bracket to work a little bit harder. Nonetheless, this game was legendary. I was on the edge of my seat throughout map 3 and I didn't think my heart could take it. It's always fun watching these teams go at it. I also want to point out that Busio showed everyone that his last year run was not a fluke. If the rest of the 100 Thieves players can follow his leadership, as well as EG's old assistance coach philosophy, I can see them slowly having a zero to hero run similar to Evil Geniuses last year. I have high hopes for Sentinels to move on, especially if they face Leviathan. However, if it's a rematch between Loud, then I would be sweating a little bit more. As always, throw a like for the video, it helps the channel a lot. Stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one, where team skins should be out by then.